Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we've got 35 easy shiny hunting locations for every new Pokemon that can have an isolated encounter in the Teal Mask DLC. There are 44 evolution lines available in Kitakami. We've covered two of those already in Thebas and Melotic and Sinistra and Poltergeist. They are videos already on the channel. If you want to check those out, they'll be linked in the description below. The remaining 42 evolution lines, there are actually six of those evolution lines that we're not going to be able to hunt with isolated encounter methods, so not included in this video. These Pokemon include the Chimeco lines, Amanda Buzz line, the Seedot, Nuzleaf and Shiftry line, Bellsprout line, Pawfish, so that's Crawdont as well, and Apom and Ambipom in Pokemon Violet. I would suggest going out and getting mass outbreaks for these Pokemon because whatever you do, I've not been able to find a location where you just have that one Pokemon spawn in, making it very difficult to actually isolate the shiny hunting for this particular Pokemon. Everything else that we are covering in today's video has very specific isolation methods, so you're going to be able to hunt for these Pokemon specifically and very easily. And to make this video a little bit more digestible, I've chaptered everything down below in the timeline so you can skip through to the exact Pokemon that you want to hunt. And a few prereqs before we get into the actual shiny hunts and the locations for these Pokemon, you're going to need a bought load of Herba Mystica because most of these shiny hunts are going to be based around setting up sparkling level 3 sandwich for the specific type of Pokemon that we're going after. Although if you don't want to use Herba Mystica, you can set up an encounter power level 2 for that specific type using other recipe ingredients. Throughout this video, we'll be using a variety of different sandwich recipes to get the sparkling and encounter power level 3 for the shiny hunts. I'll reference a few recipe lists on the screen now for you that you can refer back to throughout this video. But if you have your own preferred recipe to get these sandwich powers, please comment below what your favorite sandwich recipe is for shiny hunting. We've done two videos in Kitakami for the teal mask for how to get easy Herba Mystica. There is one that covers how you can get a complete set of Herba Mystica as a gift by completing a side quest. So check that one out for free Herba Mystica. And the other one goes over the five and six star Terroid Pokemon that are available in Kitakami and the exact Pokemon that you're going to want to beat to get easy Herba Mystica in your game. Again, they will be linked in the description below. And the final thing to do before you go into this shiny hunt, if you haven't already, is to make sure you've got the zoom function turned on in your games. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to spot the shinies when you're out shiny hunting around the Kitakami region. To turn this function on, go into your home menu, then down into system settings down into system and then find that zoom function and just toggle it on now when you're in game if you double tap your home button it will zoom in and you're going to be able to get an even closer view of what's in front of you making those harder to see shinies a little bit easier to identify the first hunt is going to be for Jangma or the dragon type Pokemon. You're going to want to head into the Gracious Stones fly point, which is just to the west of the Timeless Woods. And once you're here, you're going to want to heading up to this cliff ridge area here where you'll find a cavern. But once you're on the ridge and you've dropped a save, you're going to want to set up your picnic and create a sandwich. It's going to give you the encounter power level three and sparkling power level three for dragon type Pokemon. There are a variety of different recipes that we outlined at the start that are all available down in the description. Now, once you've set this up, you want to head in to the cavern area and you're going to want to position yourself on the right side of the cavern facing the opposite wall like we are here. The method that we're going to use here is going to be using the let's go function with our Pokemon and you'll see the Jangma all when you're positioned correctly will be coming out of the wall in front of you and there'll just be a constant flow of them coming out. What we need to do here is use that Lexico function to keep knocking the Jangma Ors out and new ones to spawn in. So you've got that good flow. You've got 30 minutes on your sparkling power level three sandwich. And by continuously doing this, you're really going to be in a bit of an AFK mode where you can just sit and wait for the shiny to spawn. It's not a guarantee that you're going to get it in your first sandwich. So you may need to restart your game, start this whole process again, but it is an easy process to do and a very easy shiny to identify as well. The shiny has a pink heart on its head with a golden colored body. So very easy shiny to identify and if you just continually do this method of knocking them out, new ones spawning in with that sparkling power level three, you'll find this shiny in no time at all. The next shiny that we're going to hunt is a Scarlet exclusive. It is going to be for Gligar, the ground and flying type. You're going to want to head to the Fallen Horn, which is in the Fellhorn Gorge. And from here, you're going to want to make your way 
to this mark on your map. This location is just south of the Timeless Woods and you want to look for this boulder right here and this is going to be our point to set up. It gives us a good view of the area in front of us. First thing you're going to want to do is knock out the static spawn for Vikavolt and once this is done come back to this rock location here and drop a save. This method is going to be using the picnic method so set up your picnic after dropping the save and set yourself up a sandwich that gives you sparkling power and encounter power level 3 for ground type Pokemon. Once you've done this take down your picnic and watch as the Gligar spawn in in this area. Shiny Gligar is a very light blue opposed to the pink of its normal color. So very easy shiny to spot and you just rinse and repeat this method. Once no more Gligar are spawning in in this area, set up your picnic, despawn everything and take down your picnic for more to spawn in and then wait for the shiny to appear. Just rinse and repeat this method. You've got 30 minutes with your sparkling power and your encounter power sandwich. If this 30 minutes passes and you don't get the shiny, just reset your game and repeat this process until you get your shiny Gligar. Next up is Lotad for that Ludicolo line. We're going to want to head to this area of the Infernal Pass. And once you're here, you're going to want to head to this pool area right next door, which is just west to the Infernal Path area. And once you're at this location, you want to make sure that you are about this distance away from the NPC character in front of the pool. So enough space for you to set up your picnic and a good view of the pool area. Good distance away, you want to drop a save before you do anything, then set up a picnic and make a sandwich for encounter power level 3 and sparkling power level 3 for grass type Pokemon. We're going to use the same method that we use for Gligar, setting up and taking down our picnic to spawn in fresh Lotad every time we do this. You'll want to use the zoom function with this method so you can see all the Lotad that spawn in in this pool. Lotad easy to spot as well. It's got a very dark purple body opposed to the blue of its standard spawn and the leaf on top of its head is a much darker green. Now repeat this method of setting up your picnic to despawn any non-shinies and take it down to spawn new ones in until that shiny does appear. The next shiny we're going for is shiny Poliwhirl Poliwag so we can get a shiny Poliwrath and Politoed. This will be an isolated encounter for these water type Pokemon and you're going to want to make your way to the Fallen Horn which is in the Felhorn Gorge area. Once you're at this location, head directly for the cave area in front of you and head inside. Once you're inside the cave, you want to position yourself right here towards this back wall facing the other side like we are right here. And this is going to be a spot where you're going to be able to set up a picnic. Position yourself, make sure you can set your picnic up. And if you are able to take your picnic down, you're in a good spot right here and drop a save. Again, it's going to be a very similar method to how we hunted for the Lotad and the Gligar. But the sandwich that we're setting up this time is giving us encounter power level 3 and sparkling power level 3 for water type Pokemon. With your sandwich powers set up, you want to just despawn your picnic and you will see Poliwags and Poliwills spawning in from the opposite side of the cave. They're not going to spawn in massive numbers. You're going to normally get between 5 to 6 six spawning at a time and it can be a mixture of both. Poliwag is a very difficult shiny to spot. It is maybe one shade lighter of blue but use the zoom or the camera function here to get a good look at the Pokemon when they're spawning in and compare them with the other Poliwag next to them as they spawn in together. Poliwhirl is going to be a lot easier to spawn in because it is a much lighter shade of blue, so a much easier Pokemon to spot. And repeat this method to just despawn any non-shinies that are on the field so you get new ones until that shiny does finally appear. The next shiny we're going for is a bug type in Grubbin and Charger Bug. And we can isolate hunt this specific bug type Pokemon in the north area of the Wistful Fields. You want to be coming to this specific spot on your map. It's easy to get to if you head up to the fly point in the Paradise Barrens. Once you're at this area, you want to make your way towards the back wall as we are here and position yourself next to these loose rocks. Again, using the picnic method, we're setting up our picnic we are dropping a save before we do anything and then setting up a sandwich which is giving us the encounter and sparkling power level three for bug type pokemon again once this is set up take down your picnic you will see an array of grubbin and charger bug spawn in on the field charger bug is easy to spot because of its very vibrant red color gonna have no trouble spotting this when it does spawn in and Grubbin although very small is still an easy spot because of its red shading over its regular form which has more of an orange and a yellow hint. You will need to use the zoom function though it will make this shiny hunt a lot easier but again for this method just take down your picnic 
set it up again if no shinies spawn in, and then just repeat this method until you get that shiny. Next up, we're heading to the Timeless Woods, and we want to be heading to the northeast area of this location. Once you reach this area, you want to be really setting yourself up. So you're setting your picnic up on a sideways angle to the bank, and the picnic table should be going into the bush, as you can see here. Again, we're using the picnic despawning method here. So as soon as you're in this location, and you're looking down the bank like we are, drop a save, set your picnic up and create a sandwich that's going to give you the encounter power and sparkling power level 3 for poison type Pokemon. Once you've set this up, you've got 30 minutes to hunt for the shiny Spinarak and the Ariados. Shiny Spinarak, easy to spot because of its blue coloration opposed to the green of its normal form. And the Ariados is going to be a vibrant pink color opposed to its normal red form. Very easy shinies to spot. And again, like with this method, you just take down your picnic, let the spawns come in. If no shinies appear, set your picnic table up once again to get rid of everything on the field and take it down for a new set of spawns to come in until that shiny does appear. For the next one, we're staying in the timeless woods and you want to try and make sure that it is daytime when you do this hunt. You can do it at night, but you are going to get conflicting spawns with this next one. It is for Phantom, so we can get that and a shiny Trevenant. In the timeless woods, you want to be heading to this area, which is towards the northern area of the timeless woods and making your way to this position on the map. Now, when you're here, you want to be positioning yourself on the back here and again using the picnic method to do this hunt you're going to want to drop a save before we do anything and then set up a sandwich it's going to give you the sparkling and encounter power level three for ghost type pokemon yes phantom will spawn through the day even though it is a ghost in the timeless woods making this shiny hunt an easy one to isolate you are going to get the odd mimikyu popping up but the majority of pokemon in this area through the day that will be spawning are the phantom and you are going to need to use your zoom function in this method what you can do is set your picnic up and to give you an even better leverage position is once your picnic's down and the phantoms start spawning in Get on your ride Pokemon, it's going to elevate you that little bit higher and then start using your zoom function to spot the shiny phantom. Shiny phantom going to be easy to spot. It has got a grey face and red leaves opposed to its brown face and green leaves on its normal form. And just repeat this method as we've done with the other shiny hunts, taking down your picnic to generate new spawns on the field. No shinies appear. Set up your picnic, despawn everything and repeat this method. You've got 30 minutes for this shiny hunt. If you don't get the shiny in this amount of time, reset your game, set up the sandwich again and repeat this method until shiny phantom appears in your game. The next location we're going to head to is at the Kitakami Hall. And here we're going to be able to hunt for three separate Pokemon in one location. Once you reach Kitakami Hall or the Revelers Road entrance, you're going to want to head this direction and jump off the cliff and head to this ledge here and here you'll find a cavern area now you want to head inside this cavern area and there will be a static spawn for a sand slash the first thing that you're going to want to do is defeat this and get rid of it so it doesn't conflict with your shiny hunt in this cave area now once the sand slash has been taken care of you want to position yourself right here and drop a save before you set your picnic up make sure you open your map and check what time of day it is if it's daytime then we can proceed with this hunt the first pokemon we're going to go after in this location is sand slash it's through the daytime this is a perfect time to do this hunt you want to set up your picnic and create a sandwich it's going to give you an encounter power and sparkling power level three for ground type pokemon now you're going to use the picnic method taking down your picnic and letting the sand slash spawn in at the opposing wall that you're facing like we are here you're going to get a large number of sand slash coming in and it is an easy shiny to spot and it is going to be a green color opposed to its normal yellow coloration again just repeat this method setting up your picnic to despawn everything taking it down to let new spawns come in until the shiny does appear in this same location you can hunt for geodude as well so this is the same location next to the kitakami hall next to revelers road in the cave where we can go for geodude again Set up your picnic and this time we're going to create a sandwich that's going to be encounter power level 3 and sparkling power level 3 for rock type Pokemon. Exactly the same method that we did for the sand slash. Once this sandwich power is set up, you want to take down your picnic and let the Geodude spawn in. Geodude, again, an easy shiny to spot because it is going to be a golden color opposed to its normal gray rock color. 
Now, the third Pokemon that you can get in this location is going to be Sentrant and Furret. But you are only going to be able to catch this Pokemon through the night. So you want to come to this location here when it is dusk in your game. You'll be able to see dusk when you open your map and you look at the weather at the top and it is this icon. This is a perfect time to set up your sandwich, giving you the encounter part and sparkling power level three for normal type Pokemon. And you'll be able to have that full 30 minutes through the evening, meaning that you're getting the maximum time out of this spawn location. Again, using the same method that we used with the Sand Slash and the Geodude, you're going to be wanting to use the Picnic method to take your Picnic down, let the spawns come in at the opposite side of the cave to where we're standing, and then set your Picnic up if no spawns come in. Sentrant, again, an easy shiny to spot. It is going to be a lighter color of yellow opposed to its more darker brown of its non-shiny variant. Next location is going to be a one where we can hunt for two separate Pokemon. It is located here on the map and the quickest way to get to it is going to be from the Ogre Ousting Fly Point. Once you're here, you're going to want to just head directly up the Oni Mountain towards this point on the map. And the first Pokemon that we're going to hunt in this location is going to be Clefairy. Now you want to head into the cavern area here and make your way to this middle spot. Drop a save and I want to set your picnic up again and create a sandwich. It's going to give you level three encounter power and sparkling power for fairy type Pokemon. Now the method is slightly different for this one. Once you've set this sandwich power up, you're going to want to exit the cave. And once you start to exit the cave, you'll see a lot of Pokemon starting to spawn in, in namely the Clefairy and Clefas. Now you want to stand at the entrance of the cave and then re-enter the cave and you'll notice a lot more spawns in this area. You'll want to pan around the room and you'll be able to check for the Clefa and the Clefairy to see if any are shiny. Easy to spot because their ears are going to be green. If none of them are shiny, just walk into the center of the room again and reset up your picnic, despawning everything in the cavern. And once your picnic's been set up, just take it straight back down and run back out of the cave again and allow more spawns to generate. You'll be able to look in and see the spawns regenerating. Wait maybe a second or two and then re-enter the cave and check everything once again, repeating this method. And in this same location on the Oni Mountain, just north of the Kitakami Hall, you are going to be able to hunt as well for Hootoot. So you want to come into the cave once again and then come to the middle, drop a save, then set your picnic up and you're going to be setting up the encounter part and sparkling power level three or flying type Pokemon. If you do this at night, you'll have more spawns, but not necessarily required because Hootoot will appear in the daytime in this cave area as well. So you want to just repeat the same method that we did for the Clefairy, where you enter the cave, set your picnic up if no shinies are in the cave right there, despawn everything with your picnic, then take your picnic down and exit the cave just to the entrance. See all the Hootoot spawning in through the tunnel entrance and then re-enter the cave to check all of the Pokemon spawned in. None of them are shiny, do the same as before. Set your picnic up to despawn everything take it down and leave the cavern to get a whole new host of spawns in this area. And then repeat this method until the shiny spawns in. Again, as always, if you don't get the shiny in the allotted 30 minutes that you get with your sandwich power, then you can just restart your game, set up the same sandwich and repeat the same process that we've done already. And hopefully you get the shiny very easily for both of these Pokemon in this area. The next location that we are going to head to involves us getting up to five Pokemon from this one location. There are two different spots in this location, but there are five Pokemon in total that we're going to be able to access and shiny hunt in the Crystal Pool area. Now, once you've reached this location, the first thing that you're going to want to do is head over this bridge and come around to this side of the Crystal Pool until you reach a cavern area just to the west of this location. Now, outside the cave, the first thing that we're going to want to do is just open your map just to see that it is nighttime in your game. If it is nighttime, then drop a save here and then set up a picnic. This method is going to be slightly different. We're not going to be setting up or taking down a picnic to respawn Pokemon. We are going to be setting up an encounter power and sparkling power level three for ghost type Pokemon. Now, once you've set this up and you've saved, you want to get on your ride Pokemon and enter the cavern. You want to fall down the first tunnel into this first area, and then you're going to want to make your way into the next tunnel system, which will take you down another floor to a pool where you'll fall in. If you're familiar with the Feebas and Melotic hunt, you'll, this is where it will fall into. 
And then straight ahead of where you've fallen into will be a tunnel system that will lead down to the bottom of this area where we are now. And there'll be rubble either side of you. And you want to position yourself right here so you're looking up at the top of the tunnel. Now, for this method, we are going to be using the let's go function. So you want to just send out whatever Pokemon you've got and then let it battle all of the Pokemon, knocking them out, making more new Pokemon spawn in in this area. Here, you're primarily because of the nighttime and the sandwich power that we've got set up. You're going to get Litwick and Duskull spawning in in this area, predominantly Litwick. Going to be a little bit more difficult to spot. They're a bit whiter coloration on their body and the flame is more blue. And Duskull are going to be a more red color rather than their gray black color that they are in their normal forms. Zoom function in this area as well to get a better look at the Litwick that are spawning in every time your Pokemon knocks another one out. And it is a very easy method, this shiny hunt, because you are very AFK here. The only thing that you're going to have to do is just keeping an eye out for the shiny and then resend your Pokemon out in the let's go function. Every time it stops battling, it will get to a certain number of Pokemon it defeats and it will just stop and return to you. So at that stage, you start the let's go function to start knocking out more Pokemon that are spawning in in the 30 minutes that you've got. Just make sure that it is nighttime. If it does turn to day, then you will notice because these ghost type Pokemon will stop spawning in and you'll get other spawns like Salandit, Gibble and Dunsparce. So if this does happen, just reset your game and wait till it turns nighttime again. Set up that same Sandwich power for the encounter power level 3 and sparkling power level 3 for ghost type pokemon and come back and repeat the process until you get the shiny for both of these ghost type pokemon the next hunt in the crystal pool area is going to be the same spot for three different pokemon the first one we're going to look at is for yanma now you need to make sure that it is daytime when you do hunt for Yanma, you want to come to this location right here as you're exiting the crystal pool area in around this exact spot here, which is just near the entrance and you've got a good view of everything in front of you. Again, we're going to use the picnic method. So once you're in this spot, drop a save and then set up a sandwich. It's going to give you sparkling power and encounter power level three or bug type Pokemon. Once you've done this, take down your picnic and you will see a flurry of Yanma spawning in in the area in front of you. And Yanma, again, a very easy shiny to spot because of its blue coloration opposed to its regular green coloration for its non-shiny variation. Now, you want to be very vigilant with this shiny hunt because Yanma can despawn very quickly once it appears on the field. So as soon as it does spawn in, make sure you are paying attention, drop a save straight away and then proceed to encounter it and capture it. And if the daytime turns to dusk tonight, then the Yanma will no longer spawn. So you've got to time this one a little bit like you do your ghost types. Just make sure that you're starting this at the beginning of a new day in your game. You'll get that full 30 minutes for the time of your sandwich power. In this same location, you can also hunt for Slugma. It doesn't matter if it is day or night time for this hunt, but you can set up a sandwich for encounter and sparkling power level three for fire type Pokemon. Again, in the same location, using the same method, drop a save before you start, set up respected sandwich for fire type Pokemon and take down your picnic to spawn in the Slugma. Slugma going to be an easy shiny to spot because it is a gray silvery color opposed to its vibrant red of its normal form and repeat this process. Take your picnic down, let the Slugma spawn in. If the shiny doesn't appear, set your picnic up, despawn everything and repeat this process for the next 30 minutes. Hopefully you'll get the shiny very quickly. If not, reset your game, come back in and repeat the process until you're able to get the shiny Slugma. In this same location in the Crystal Pool area, you are going to be able to hunt also for coughing, which is the poison type Pokemon. So you're going to want to use exactly the same method that we did for Yanma and the Slugma. It doesn't matter what time of day it is for the coughing either. You're going to want to set up a sandwich that's going to give you the encounter power and sparkling power level three for poison type Pokemon and then take your picnic down, allow the coughings to spawn in. It's a very easy shiny to spot. It is gonna be blue coloration rather than the purple and it's smoke that it pumps out is gonna be purple. So even more of an identifier for allowing you to spot the shiny when it does spawn in. 
Be very careful when you go up against this shiny when you do eventually get it because this Pokemon can explode. So make sure you do save before encountering the coffin. And if you've got something that can put it to sleep, that will definitely help you catching this shiny without any issue. The next shiny we'll be hunting for is Vulpix. You want to make your way to the bottom of Kitakami Hall, which is on the Revelers Road. We're going to want to make our way west towards this location here and to the top of this ridge looking down the bank. So this is where we're going to want to hunt for the Vulpix. Again, it doesn't matter what time of day or night it is, you'll be able to find Vulpix here throughout any time of the day. So once you're in this spot right here, again, we'll be using the picnic method, so drop a save. This is an ideal one to do if you've got time left over from a Slugma hunt earlier in the video. But if you haven't, you've dropped the save, you want to set up a picnic and have Encounter and Sparkling Power Level 3 for Fire-type Pokemon. And once this is set up, you want to just take down your picnic and span across the entire hillside. You're going to have a good view looking down and the Vulpix is going to be very easy to spot. More yellow color than its darker orange. So it really does stick out compared to its non-shiny form. Again, a very easy one to spot and you're not really going to have to rely on the zoom function at all here. You can just, if the shiny does not spawn in, set your picnic up once again as we are positioned here despawn everything and take it down for new spawns to come in and rinse and repeat this process until you get the shiny Vulpix in your game. The next location is going to be around the Kitakami Hall once again, but we are going to be coming to this exact spot on our map, which is just to the east of the Ogre Ousting game. So you want to head to the Kitakami Hall the main entrance, which is just on the, the foot of Revelers Road. And you're going to want to make your way to this area right here, which is just above this area here. And just on this ledge is where we're going to be want to be basing ourselves for this method, because this method is going to be using the Kitakami Hall as a way to despawn everything on the field. And then we're going to be entering back into the Fellhorn Gorge, as you can see here. The first thing we're going to want to do when we're on top of this ridge is just set up a picnic. So come down onto this main flat area here, drop a save and then set up a picnic, which is going to give you encounter power level three and sparkling power level three for water type Pokemon. Once you've done that, come back up onto the ridge here and you're going to head right to the back of this ledge and you're going to get the message coming up Kitakami Hall. Turn back around and walk back down onto the ledge and you're going to see Felhorn Gorge appear and Pokemon will start spawning on the ridge below you. Now, if it's during the night, you're going to have more spawns for Cramorant here. And this is a great spot for getting shiny Cramorant, which is an easy Pokemon to spot because normally Cramorant is blue. The shiny version is a bright orange, so a very easy Pokemon to spot. They're going to spawn in clusters as well, so you're going to get a lot of spawns at one time. Now, the other Pokemon that you can hunt very well in this location using this exact same method is going to be Ducklet. Ducklet are going to spawn in the daytime. Predominantly, you are going to get Cramorant spawning with them, but not as many in the daytime. So if it's through the day, Ducklet is the Pokemon that you're going to want to hunt in this area. Ducklet, easy to spot, normally a blue color, but a very different pink color in its shiny form. And you want to just repeat this method that we're doing uh, you want to walk out onto the ledge, let everything spawn in on the, the ridge below you. And once nothing else is spawning in, you want to turn around and walk back to the top of this ridge until you get that message saying Kitakami Hall. Everything should spawn out of frame and then walk back down the cliff. You'll get the Felhorn Gorge message pop up and all the spawns will start appearing once again below you. And if you're hunting the Cramorant at night, keep an eye out for that orange one. And if it is for the Ducklet during the day, keep an eye out for the pink one. Just repeat this process over and over again until you get the shiny spawning in in your game. So the next Pokemon that we're going to be hunting is going to be on the Kitakami Road. So you want to be heading to this exact location right here at the bottom of the map. You want to head to the fly point of the bus stop. This will make it quicker for getting to this location. And once you're at this location, you want to just come up onto this bank with a single tree in front of it, kind of positioning yourself like this. From here, you're going to be able to set up a picnic and you've got a good view of everything around you that will be spawning in. We'll be again using the picnic method for this one. And the first thing, as always, that we're going to be wanting to do is drop a save. This first hunt is going to be for Puchiena, which is the dark type Pokemon. So we're dropping a save and then setting up a sandwich, which is going to give us the encounter and sparkling power level three for dark type Pokemon. It can be day or night for this one. It doesn't really matter. Maybe easier to spot the shiny at the night time, but you're not going to have too much of an issue spotting it through the day either. 
Once this sandwich part is set up, you want to just take your picnic down, allow the spawns to come in in this area and use your zoom function, which might make it easier to kind of span around the whole area behind you and in front of you looking for this shiny Puccina, which is a yellow color opposed to its normal gray coat. This same location for the Puccina can be used for Sawaddle as well, which is the grass and bug type Pokemon. It is going to be a very hard Pokemon to spot because of the size of this Pokemon. You are going to have to use your zoom function in this method. So once again, drop a save before you start anything from the bank area where we're positioned here and set up a sandwich or encounter power and sparkling power level three for grass type Pokemon. It's important that you use the grass type here because you are gonna get an array of other bug types that can appear in this area. So you want to just set up the grass type for the Swaddle if it is the Pokemon that you're hunting. And again, like the other picnic methods, once these sandwich powers are set up, just take down your picnic and allow the Pokemon to spawn in in the area in front of you. And what you want to be looking out for is the main body of Swaddle will be green opposed to the yellow body of the non-shiny variant. The leaf surrounding it as well will be a much darker color. So that are two indicators making it a bit easier to spot but you will need to use your zoom function and this will come in key throughout the shiny hunt. Repeat the process of setting up your picnic to despawn anything when you haven't got a shiny on the field. Take it down for more spawns to come in till you do get that shiny swaddle and make sure you do save before encountering this Pokemon. But this shiny is again another pretty easy shiny hunt using the methods that we've outlined in this video. Now not in the exact same location but a bit further down Kitakami Road more closer to the bus stop and we want to be just about located here next to the bus stop. You'll be around here on your map. This is going to be the location that we're going to be hunting for Q to fly which is the fairy and bug type Pokemon. So when you're at this location here, the good indicator to be in the right spot is there'll be two boulders in front of the bus stop. You want to be in front of the smaller one that we're looking at right now. And we want to be looking down the road here. And this is going to be the spot where the cutie flies are going to be spawning in against the wall in front of us. And it's going to make spotting the shiny a lot easier in this method. So on the road here, we're going to drop a save before we do anything. Then we're going to set up our picnic and get ourselves a sandwich. It's going to give us the sparkling power and encounter power level three for fairy type Pokemon. And again, with all the other picnic methods, take down your picnic and look towards the wall like we are here. And you'll see a lot of cutie flies will be spawning in in front of you and going to be easy to spot. Normal Cutify is a very yellow color and the shiny is going to have a pink tinge to its body. And that is going to be the big kind of tell for being able to spot the shiny. It is very, very small. So it's advisable to use your camera function first, then your zoom function after that. It will give you a good view of everything spawning in in this area. Just make sure you pan up and down the road to make sure that you're not missing any cutie flies that are coming and spawning in. Then if no shinies are there, just set your picnic up where you are and take it down again for more to spawn in and do this over until you get that shiny cutie fly spawning in in this location. So you can have that shiny cutie fly and shiny Rabombi in your copy of Scarlet and Violet. The next shiny is going to be for the fighting type shiny Mindfu. We're going to head to the Crystal Pool area and mark this location on our map. It's going to be if you're familiar with where you defeat Pheasantipity. It is going to be to the east of the Oni Mountain where we're going to be heading and into the Chilling Waterhead Cavern system. And once you're at this ledge here, you want to come inside the cavern area and this is going to be the Chilling Waterhead area. And you're going to want to make your way to this part of the cavern, just at the very top here. And you're going to want to position yourself so you can set up a picnic in this area and have a good view of the floor in the area below. This is where the minefield are going to spawn in. Once you're in this position, drop a save and then set your picnic up and you're going to be setting up a sandwich that's going to give you level three sparkling power and encounter power for fighting type Pokemon. Once you have this sandwich set up, despawn your picnic and if you're in the right spot, you are going to see the Mindfu spawning in on the area below where you're standing and they're going to spawn in very vast numbers. Now Mindfu is going to be an easy shiny to spot. Normal coloration is going to be yellow and red. And the shiny is going to be more of a white color body with purple color arms. And like all of the other picnic methods, once everything is spawned onto the field, normal spawning in, set your picnic up once again. 
despawn everything on the field, take it straight back down and allow a new batch to spawn onto the field. Now you can use the zoom function if you want, but not really necessary for this method. Going to be an easy shiny to spot. Once the shiny spawns in, you're going to just save your game before encountering it in case anything goes wrong and then encounter and catch yourself your shiny Mindfu. Now another Pokemon in the Crystal Pool area that you're going to be able to catch is going to be Carbink. Now once you fly into the Crystal Pool area you want to make your way over the bridge again towards this back area of this location until you find the cave system here. Now with your ride Pokemon going to be careful as you drop down so as soon as you drop down you're going to start to glide you're going to head down all of these ridges until you see a cave system you're not going to drop right down to the floor and you're going to drop down into this area here so you'll see from the outside this is the first cavern that you're going to come to as you drop down you want to glide as you come into this area there'll be a secret cavern in the side of the tunnel as it drops down now you want to make your way into the cavern area here and towards the middle of this cave. This is going to be the only place that you're going to be able to set up a picnic. Once you're in this location, set your picnic up. Make sure you're in a spot where you can set the picnic up. And then you're going to take it down and drop a save before we start this process. As always, dropping a save means if we don't get the shiny in the 30 minutes that were allocated from the sparkling and encounter power level 3 for fairy type Pokemon, then we can restart our game, set the same sandwich up, and we're not wasting any Herba Mysticas. So with that save dropped, picnic set up, set your sandwich up that's going to give you the sparkling power and encounter power level 3 for fairy type Pokemon. And once you've done that, take your picnic down and then exit the cavern area like we're doing here and just to the edge and then turn around and make your way back into the main area once again. Once you come back into the cavern area, you'll notice a lot of carbink are spawning around the sides of the cavern. And all you're going to want to do is look out for the shiny here. Again, a very easy shiny to spot in this location because it's going to have a bright blue scarf around its head and the rest of its body are going to be a more black color with blue gems on it rather than the gray and gray gems around the regular non-shiny form. So if there's no shinies appearing here, make your way into the middle of the room again, set your picnic up, despawn everything and then take it down and leave the cave system once again, doing the same process as we did before to the edge, then turn around and re-enter the cave and check the newly spawned carbings to see if the shiny spawned in. If it hasn't, just repeat this process over again that we've just done until you get the shiny carbing spawning in in this area. Next shiny we're going after is another fighting type and it is this time for a shiny Conkledo. So we'll be going after shiny Timber, which is available on the Oni Mountain. You want to fly in to the Infernal Pass, turn around and make your way towards the Oni Mountain and make your way up to Oni's Moor area. Now, once you reach the top of the bank here, you're going to, this is going to be the area where we're hunting for shiny Timber. You want to drop a save as always because we are going to use the picnic method. And once you've dropped that save, set up your picnic on this incline here and set up a sandwich that is going to give you the sparkling and encounter power level 3 for fighting type Pokemon. Once that's set up, you're going to want to take down your picnic and you're going to have a very good view of the area in front of you where specifically timber is going to spawn in in good numbers now shiny timber is very easy to spot it is going to be more of a yellowy gold color so again an easy one to spot and you can just use your camera function here to span across the area in front of you if no shinies have spawned in just set your picnic up once again and then despawn everything on the field take your picnic down and allow more timbers to come in and repeat this process until you get your shiny timber spawning in in this area and you should be able to do it within 30 minutes if not you have saved before doing this like all of the other hunts in this video just reset your game come back into it and repeat the steps that we've already done until you do get your shiny timber for that shiny conkleder in your copy of scarlet and violet next we will be going for a shiny Illumise and Volbeat and the area that we're going to want to come to hunt these specifically is in the Mossfell Confluence. So you want to be heading to this fly spot here. Then from the fly spot, you want to be heading over to this embankment on this side of the river and it'll be a pebbled area and you're going to want to position yourself right about here. And this is the perfect spot for you to set up another picnic. So before we do anything, just save your game and then set up a picnic and make sure that you're sending a sandwich that gives you sparkling and encounter power for a bug type Pokemon. Once you've done this, take down your picnic and then you're going to be spanning around the entire area around you, in front of you, to the sides of you, 
and behind you as well where you'll be looking out for the shiny Ilmais and Volbeat that are going to spawn in this vicinity and they're going to be the only things that are going to spawn in apart from the maybe odd Spinarak but you, that's going to be a very small number of those that are going to spawn in the majority of Pokemon in this area for this hunt are going to be Ilmais and Volbeat. Ilumai is going to be an easy one to spot because opposed to its purple cheeks and purple rings around its body it's going to be orange and Volbeat is going to be even easier because instead of its red hood it's going to have a very vibrant blue hood and again if no shiny spawn in on the first time round when you take your picnic down just set your picnic back up despawn everything on the field take it down again and allow more Ilumai's and Volbeats to spawn in making sure that you do check them use the zoom function it is very helpful with this method and then repeat this until you do get the shiny of either one or both of these Pokemon that you're hunting in the games next new Pokemon we will be going after in today's video is gonna be for shiny nose pass and we're gonna be heading to the paradise barrens area but instead of heading to the Paradise Barrens fly point, we're going to actually head to the Gracious Stones fly point because it is closer to where we'll be going. From the Gracious Stones in the Kitakami Wilds, you want to be heading west towards the Paradise Barrens to this area right here. And it is towards the eastern area of the Paradise Barrens to the top of this area and this exact location here where we'll be hunting for Nose Pass. And you'll be looking down the bank and this is the exact spot that we'll be looking and hunting for this Pokemon. We're going to want to use the picnic method once again, so it involves dropping a save before we do anything, then setting up a picnic and creating a sandwich is going to give us the encounter power and sparkling power level 3 for rock type Pokemon. Once you've set this up, take your picnic down and you're going to have a very easy time just spanning the area, looking down the bank for all the nose paths that spawn in, very easy shiny to spot opposed to its blue purpley color that it is normally it's going to be a golden color so again a very easy shiny to spot in this location and if no shiny spawns in set your picnic up despawn everything take your picnic down and check the new spawns if the shiny does appear save your game encounter it and capture yourself a shiny nose pass the next new shiny that we'll be going for in today's video is going to be for shiny swinub so we can get a shiny mama swine in scarlet and violet and you're going to head to the infernal pass fly location make your way up through the oni's moor and you're going to come to this location here up on the ridge in front of this cavern which is located here on your map now in front of this cave system you're going to want to drop a save and then set a picnic up giving yourself the sparkling and encounter power level three for ground type pokemon once you've done that come into the cave system and position yourself in this location here and you're going to see a bunch of swinub spawning in on the opposite side of the cave now for this method we're going to have to use the let's go function so when you're positioned in this spot and enough swinubs have spawned in you're going to send your Pokemon out to start knocking out the Swinubs. Every Swinub that does get knocked out, if you're in the correct position, will allow more to spawn in, meaning you're going to eventually get the Shiny to spawn in in this area. And it's a bit AFK, this mode, where you're just going to pay attention to everything spawning in, making sure that if the Shiny Swinub does spawn in, you do notice it. It's going to be an easy Shiny to spot because of its green coloration opposed to its normal brown coloration. And if your Let's Go Pokemon stops attacking and defeating the Swinub, then just reinitiate the Let's Go function, call your Pokemon back, send it out again to start the process over and allow it to just keep knocking the Swinubs out for 30 minutes as you go into it until that shiny Swinub does appear. The next Pokemon we're going to be shiny hunting is going to be for the Ghost Form Oracorio and we're going to want to be heading to the Wisteria Pond where we encountered Monkadori in our playthrough. Now from this location you're going to get very strong spawns of Oracorio through the day even though it's a ghost type and during the night. So through the day is going to be a bit easier because you're not going to get any other ghost types spawning in this area but you want to make your way to the top of the pond to this ridge area here so you've got a good view of everything below you and once you're in this spot drop a save once again we're using the picnic method for this one uh, drop a save set up your picnic and create a sandwich it's going to give you the sparkling and encounter power level three for ghost type pokemon once you've set this up take your picnic down and the oracorio will start spawning in in clusters so it's easy to spot the shiny the shiny is going to be a very light blue color opposed to its regular purple color so it will really stand out when it does spawn onto the field again no shiny spawns in 
Then just set your picnic up, despawn everything on the field, pan around to make sure you've checked everything that's spawned in, set your picnic up again to despawn everything, take it down and allow a new batch of Oracorios to spawn in in this area. And you can use the zoom function in this hunt as well to help out to spot these Oracorios a little bit better when they do spawn in because some of them do spawn quite a distance away. So just being able to kind of get a closer look at the ones spawning in will identify the shiny when it does hit the field. Now in this same spot that we hunted for the grubbin and the charger bug, we're gonna also be able to hunt for shiny munchlax. It is located in the northern area of the wistful fields. And again, you're gonna wanna position yourself in the back corner of this area like we are here, next to the boulders that we can see towards this back wall and facing towards this direction here. So once you're here again, to set this up, we're using the picnic method, drop a save. Then after that, set your picnic up and use a sandwich recipe that's going to give you the sparkling and encounter power level three for normal type Pokemon. Now, if you're positioned correctly, like we are in this video, when you take your picnic down, you're going to get Munchlax spawning in in the area in front of you that's got no grass on it, making it easy to spot the Munchlax but you're also going to get them spawning to the right as well in the grasslands. But the one thing about Munchlax is it is a very, very dark blue color compared to its normal coloration. So quite easy to identify when the shiny comes in. For the ones in front of you where it's not a grassy area, you're going to be able to not use the zoom function. The shiny will be easy to spot. But for the ones in the grass, you can use that zoom function just to get a closer look at the ones spawning in the grass to make sure that that dark blue color is not the shiny because at night it can be a bit difficult to see if you're a bit further away like we are. So using that zoom function will make it a bit easier to identify the shiny if it does spawn onto the field. If no shiny spawns in, just set up your picnic again, despawn everything, take it down and get another round of spawns and repeat this process until you do get your shiny munchlax. Another hunt in the timeless woods that we are going to be doing is white striped basculin. This water pond area in the timeless woods is where we're going to be wanting to come. And to the southern bank here that we're marking on the map is the exact location where we'll be hunting for the basculin. Now, once you're at this southern bank, you're going to want to make your way around to this area where we're standing right now and face the pond so you're almost opposite the bush across from the screen as you can see now and in this position you're going to drop a save as always because we will be using the picnic method in this hunt and once you've dropped your save set up your picnic and create a sparkling and encounter power level three sandwich for water type pokemon now this isn't going to be an easy hunt by any means you are going to get upper quagsire Lotad, Lombre and Dreadnought as well spawning in this one location. But unfortunately for White Stripe Basculin, it is the one Pokemon that you can't get a mass outbreak of currently in the game. So this is going to be the only method to shiny hunt this Pokemon right here. Why we're including it and why we've excluded the other mass outbreaks because they are available. White Stripe Basculin is not available as a mass outbreak. So literally this is the only method for hunting this Pokemon right now. So once you've set up your sparkling and counter power for water type Pokemon, what you're going to do, take down your picnic and then look to the water. You're going to really need to utilize your camera and your zoom functions in this hunt because the Basculin is very difficult to spot in this pond, in particularly because of the shading of the pond as well. It can be quite deceiving when the shiny spawns in. But the shiny Basculin that you're going to be looking for is a much brighter green than the duller green of the regular form, the non-shiny forms. And also you'll not get great numbers spawning in at a time. You might get four to five spawning in at a time, but you, once they do spawn in, once you've taken your picnic down, check them, jump into the water. If you need to check them to make sure they're not shiny, it's worth checking with this Pokemon because it is such a hard hunt. And if none of them are shiny, come back to the bank where you were standing originally, set your picnic up, despawn everything in the pond and then take it down again and repeat this process until you do get the shiny white stripe basculin in the pond. As you can see here, this is the one and even though I could notice a difference in it, it was still very difficult to tell and it wasn't until I did get into the water, go directly up to it that I could tell it was a shiny. So this is why I say it's worth checking if you're a little bit unsure it's worth just jumping into the water just to encounter it to make sure that it is a shiny or it's not a shiny. 
so you don't miss this Pokemon because it is such a difficult, probably one of the hardest shinies to go for in the teal mask. The next new shiny Pokemon that we will be hunting in this video is going to be Ekans. So to get a shiny Ekans so we can have a shiny Arbok in the game, we are going to be heading to the Kitakami Hall area, the entrance which takes us on to the Revelers Road. And we're going to be heading to this location on our map which takes us down into the field land towards the Mosfell Conference area. And it will be in the Mosfell Conference area located here where we will be entering a cave system where we can do a hunt, an easy hunt for Ekans, almost AFK. So once you're at this location here outside the cave, you are not going to be able to set a picnic up inside the cave. You're going to want to drop a save here and then set your picnic up and create a sandwich. It's going to give you sparkling and encounter power level three for poison type Pokemon. Once you've done that, enter the cave and you're going to already see a lot of Ekans spawning in this area. And you're going to want to position yourself this side of the cave next to the wall. And again, a little bit like the Swinner method, we're going to use the let's go function on our Pokemon. You'll see the Ekans, there will be a rock on the other side where the Ekans will be coming out of the rock. And just next to the rock will be another spawn point for the Ekans if you position yourself correctly here. Like we are right next to this edge and all you're going to want to do is send your Pokemon out to get these Ekans and defeat them. So it spawns more in if you're in the right location and doing this will mean that you're going to be able to see a lot of Ekans spawning in continuously throughout the 30 minutes that you have your sandwich power set up for. So you want to just continue this method until the shiny spawns in. If you get through the 30 minutes and you haven't got your shiny Ekans, reset your game, start the process all over again until you do get the shiny Ekans. A very easy shiny to spot. Normal Ekans is purple and the shiny is a nice green color. So easy, easy shiny to spot. No need to use a zoom function on this one. When the shiny does spawn in in this area, make sure you drop a save before you go into the encounter. And then you're going to be able to grab yourself a shiny Ekans very easily in the games. Next shiny that we're going to be going for is an exclusive to Pokemon Violet. And it is going to be for more Pico. And it's going to be located on Oni's Moor. We're going to fly to the Infernal Pass fly point and make our way to the top of this boulder area here. You've got a good view like we have of the area below. Once you're on this boulder, Older, you're going to want to drop a save and then again we're going to be using the picnic method so set your picnic up on this area and you're going to be wanting to create a sandwich that gives you encounter power and sparkling power level three for dark type pokemon once you've set that up take your picnic down and you'll see the more pico spawning in in the area below you you can use your zoom function for this method because the more picos are quite small and you're quite far away from them so just using that zoom function will be able to identify them a lot easier. And more Pico normally has a yellow body. The shiny variant has a white body. So going to be very easy to spot. In particular, if you're looking at the feet of the more Pico, then the feet will always be white as well. So a very easy sign to look for if you are trying to spot the shiny when these spawns are coming back in after taking your picnic down. No shiny spawn in, set your picnic up, despawn everything. Repeat this process until you do get that shiny more Pico in this area. And again, this is an exclusive to Pokemon Violet, so your Scarlet players won't be able to do this one in your games. And the next shiny hunt is going to be for shiny Jotonian Wooper. We're going to make our way from the Masui Town towards Kitakami Road, and we're going to be heading towards the Revelers Road area. But before we get to the bridge, we're going to be taking a right just down this path here towards the river and just over this edge. So we just take an exit from Masui Town on to the Kitakami Road. And here beside the river is where we're going to locate ourselves for this next hunt for the Jotonian Wooper. We're going to drop a save and then we're going to set our picnic up and create a sandwich is going to give us the encounter power and sparkling power level three for ground type Pokemon. Once we've set that up, what we're going to do is use the town as a despawning method in this location. So from this spot, once you've taken your picnic down, take a look at all the spawns in this area. Jotoni and Whoop are going to be an easy one to spot because it's normally in its non shiny form. It is going to be blue and its shiny form. It is going to be pink. If none of the Pokemon spawned in at this time are pink, then you're going to turn around from this spot where we are located and just make your way towards this wall here. And it'll go from Kitakami Road into Misui Town. And when you get to the Misui Town, it will despawn everything on the field. And you're going to turn right back around and come back to the place that we were originally standing to 
to let more spawns come in and again just checking them to see if any of these spawns are the shiny one keeping an eye out for that pink whooper and if none are again just repeating this process turning back to the wall letting that Missouri town animation come up everything despawn on the field and repeating this process over and over again until you do get that shiny whooper coming onto the field the areas that you're going to watch out for are in the river here and just beside the tree area to the right of you and if you just check these areas you can use the zoom function to get a better look at the whooper spawning in especially next to the tree it will make things a little bit easier and you can use your ride pokemon to just get a little bit more height to your view as well to make it easier to spot the whoopers especially next to the tree rather than in the river area but once you do this enough time you will eventually get the shiny spawning in and it will be that pink one save before you encounter it and then you'll be able to grab yourself a shiny Jotonian whooper in your copy of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And with that that is all 36 shinies that we'll be covering in today's video that are brand new to the teal mask. Hopefully you found these easy shiny hunting locations very very helpful to get your own shinies in your games if you have please drop a like on the video and do leave a comment down below let me know what your favorite new shiny is that's available in the teal mask i'd probably say mine is ariados i just love that shiny i think it's one of the best ones that we've got so far although not the best competitively still a very good shiny but if you do want to stay up to date with all of our pokemon skull and violet content that's on the way make sure to hit that subscribe button as well thank you so much for tuning in friends have a great rest of your day and i will see you all in another video very soon so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye